I am very excited to welcome back Andy Sheckman to the show as we watch this slow motion train crash occur in front of our very eyes. Andy has called just about every occurrence that we've seen so far. So welcome, Andy. Let's see what's next. It's great to see you again, Elliot. I appreciate it. And yeah, a lot of these things are unfolding and I, I'm not a soothsayer, Elliot, but if you just take a step back, I think everyone should see this. And it's not about being right. It's just about being prepared for what I think is coming. And it is interesting, though, if you follow just the mainstream economists, you would have missed the boat big time in all this. So let's dive into what is actually going on in the economy and let's just get your take on it. So first one is Fed's inflation fight made tougher by state relief efforts. So what's happening, California announced tax rebates of up to $1,000.50 per family. Economists say measures will boost demand, fuel more inflation. So what's happening is states are trying to put cash in the hands of the people, do fiscal stimulus to relieve the pressures of inflation. What do you think about that? I think it's it's crazy. Um, it's 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 so counterintuitive. It's not even funny. I mean, what they're doing is is giving a heroin addict more heroin. Uh, it it only increases inflation. But I'd like to take a step back and just talk about your comment uh, about the Fed's fight on inflation. And I would argue that they're really not fighting inflation. What I'm getting at is this. In, in 1980, the Fed did get tough on inflation. They raised the rates all the way up to almost 20% on the federal funds rate. That killed inflation. Now, our Fed says they're getting tough on inflation, right? So we really have 13.6% inflation, but let's just call it 9%. They're getting tough on inflation, then why did they only raise rates by 75 basis points and three quarters of 1%? If they were getting tough, they would have raised them by 1,000 basis points to 10% or at least 900 to over their, their stated rate of inflation. But even more annoying and aggravating than all of this is their jawboning and bullshit about getting tough on inflation. The, their balance sheet, they told us in June, now I kept saying on your show, well, if they were really going to get tough on inflation... Why didn't they sell off their balance sheet in April and May? You know, and here they told us they're going to do it in June, right? For the third week in a row now, the Fed's balance sheet has increased, increased. So they're continuing to buy shit when they told us that they're going to start selling it. They told us they're going to get tough on inflation, but they're really not. They're jawboning. And this is why I, I keep talking about the implications of the petrodollar, of the BRICS nations, uh, of all of these institutions. And by the way, I just want to read one thing to you. I know you asked me one question, but we've talked so much about the digital yuan would, would be the launch pad for the BRICS nations to, because they've done almost 12 billion in sales in the last year on the BRIC, on the Chinese digital yuan. And I have felt for a long time that by weaponizing the dollar, as I've mentioned on your show, we are pushing all of these, these groups, these countries away from the dollar and they want to go a different direction. So here's an article that I printed out. Everyone can see it. I'm just going to read it real quick here because it, it, here again, I'm not patting myself on the back, but I was right about another thing. And I've been saying this on your show for a year. It says, yep. BRICS developing new global reserve currency, Putin says, will be based on a currency basket of the five nation bloc, according to the Russian president. President Vladimir Putin said on Wednesday that the BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, are currently working on setting up a new global reserve currency. The issue of creating an international reserve currency based on a basket of currencies of our countries is being worked out, he said at the BRICS Business Forum. According to the Russian president, the member states are also developing reliable alternative mechanisms for international payments. Earlier, the group said it was working on establishing a joint payment network to cut reliance on the Western financial system. The BRICS countries have been also boosting the use of local currencies in mutual trade. All right, here's my point. The Fed ain't getting tough on inflation. They're jawboning. They increased their balance sheet three weeks in a row when they told us this was it, we're gonna start selling, right? They raised base, the, the, the inflation rate by 75 basis points. We're already hearing talk of recession you got uh, the, 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 the betting uh, public would tell you that they're going to reverse course at some point real soon as things as the wheels start to fall off. And so what I'd like to just simply underscore here is, is that this is a planned demolition in my mind in the respect that if they really wanted to stop this, they bang, they, they pull the bandaid off like Volcker did. 
Instead, they're pussyfooting around and job boning and incentivizing those guys to go out and create new systems, new settlements, and a whole new infrastructure like we've talked about, the Belt Road Initiative, and now you see a, a corridor that Russia is allowing safe passage from Iran to India through Russia. I mean, the whole nine yards, these are all the groups that are this new G8 group. And now they just got uh, Argentina to sign on and Iran to sign on. You're getting the world is moving against the West. And when you look at the G8 group, I, I'm not trying to get so far away from all of your questions. I apologize. But and then I'll, I'll back off here. But when oh, you look good. at the G8 group, the, the group that, you know, uh, excuse me, the G7 group, you got the U.S., France, Canada, Germany, Japan, U United Kingdom and Italy. Every one of those countries is flat out broke. Insolvent. I mean, you could argue Japan's going why my republic right now. Every one of these countries is broke. And against the G8 group where you have countries that are, are resource rich and are buying all the gold. China, Russia, India, South Africa, um, uh, you know, you're talking about the countries that will, like Zoltan Bozar says, a new Bretton Woods 3 based upon commodities, not based upon debt. And so anyways, I don't mean to get so far off track, but I just want people to know that Fed's full of shit and these articles are full of shit too. They're just trying to, 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 to push the, 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 the blame on someone else when it is always about the idiocy of this government to have printed so much money. That's where the inflation came from. And, and giving everyone money for the last two years to be unproductive, it is not from any other reason that they'd like us to believe, like, like what the states are doing. And yeah, the states are giving more money. That's just, uh, just more stupidity. But bottom line is, Fed ain't getting tough on inflation. Whatever else you want to talk about, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I got off on a tangent. But that's just one of those things that really makes me mad because They've got us all believing that the Fed's getting tough on inflation and that inflation is not the U.S.'s fault or the Fed's fault. This is the fault of Putin and everyone else. And it's just a bunch of crap. Unfortunately, the mainstream talking points are not reflecting what's actually going on. This is absolutely huge. There is strength in numbers. So if all the other countries in the world, 100 plus countries get together in a commodity linked, securely backed currency type of new world order it is absolutely a threat that people need to pay attention to it is so huge and eventually you know they are getting stronger over time and so that leads us into the next headline which we know russia has explicitly stated that if finland or sweden join nato there will be repercussions we also know that russia is dangerous right they like to attack and go to war with people when they feel threatened so here is a headline NATO formally invites Finland and Sweden to join alliance. So what happens next? Uh, it's just absolute insanity. I mean, I'm not someone who, who's particularly fond of war, but you could argue that the U.S. is very hypocritical in the way that we do things. And, um, you know, like I always say, if, if, uh, if Mexico was the Ukraine and we were fighting Mexico and Russia was providing Stinger missiles drones and the intelligence on where and, and billion 60 90 billion dollars to Mexico and to, and the intelligence on where to drop the bombs and uh, and deploy the drones and and then this 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 group uh, this alliance uh, convinces uh, Canada who's our enemy uh, to join NATO I mean you're boxing them in and you know just like any caged animal they're going to strike out when they're boxed in I think it's absolute insanity and I think, you know, we, that's part of the problem with this whole stupid ass system and administration where we'd be far better off doing what, what Dr. Paul says we should do and be a libertarian or what Thomas Jefferson said we should do and pull all our troops home, stop messing with everyone's nonsense. The money that we waste, the wars that we wage, we are, I think, uh, beginning to follow history, just like all the other empires that extended themselves too far and, and, and pissed too many people off. And that's exactly what we're doing. And you can see the ramifications of that as all of the world seems to be moving away from the West and the Western influence and the Western hypocrisy. Look, I'm a patriot. I am proud to be an American. I am proud to be here and I want this country to be better, but our leaders are leading us down a path to suicide. I mean, is that really what they want? World War III? You know what, what Albert Einstein said when they asked him what, 
what kind of uh, weapons they would use in World War III. He said, I have no idea, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. And that's exactly right, because if, God forbid, we see this kind of shit happen where you're, you're provoking, openly provoking uh, a country that, you know, has hypersonic ICBMs that, that cannot be knocked down, um, that, that the State Department has publicly said they're very concerned about, uh, that we don't have the technology that they do. These are missiles that go many times the speed of sound, like Mach 10, way up in the atmosphere and hit the ground at the speed of an asteroid. We're provoking these guys. And, and they're telling us, don't do it. It's bad enough what's going on uh, in, um, what's, the, what's the name of it? Uh, their, their blockade that they got going on. right Kaliningrad? Uh, Kaliningrad, yes. I mean, they're, they're, you have your a rail blockade of, of, of strategic uh, minerals and metals and all sorts of stuff. I mean, you are provoking them in unimaginable ways. And yeah, in Kaliningrad, in Lithuania. And I, I just think uh, it's very frightening. I got three young kids. Well, my oldest being 21, my youngest being 15. And it scares the hell out of me, the world that I'm growing up in or getting old in and the world my kids are growing up in. And it's these types of things far more than the economic ramifications. But it's this type of, of, of stupidity um, that is going to reshape the way the world is uh, moving forward. And I, I think it's just absolute moronic to further antagonize this guy. And, and let's not forget, now maybe this is taking it a step too far, but he's got cancer, he's got Parkinson's. What's, what, what's the guy he's got? How many years does he have to live? He wants to... to go down with this legacy of, of bringing, you know, Russia together again and the whole Federation, USSR. And um, I don't know. I think it's just, it's, and, you know, like someone uh, that I know that knows a lot more about uh, what's going on in Russia than I do, says, look, when Putin's gone, you got the people that will replace him are far worse. They're much more hardline. Uh, they're much more anti-West. And that, you uh, be careful what you wish for type of deal. So what do I think of it? I think it's frightening as hell and moronic. Right. Well, it is interesting because Ray Dalio, he zooms out, he studies the rise and fall of empires. And so what happens is the big dominant empire gets bloated, they get indebted. And at the exact same time as they're at their weakest, the rising power comes up and threatens it. And so here we have this huge new group of countries threatening us while we're at our weakest. It's very... Like you said, it's scary. So. And you don't even have to do it with missiles. I mean, if you realize that the Belt Road Initiative and now all of the other countries that are joining on to the BRICS coalition represent close to 85 to 90 percent of the world's population. Yeah. And you're just being isolated. And in a, in a global world, you're being isolated. I mean, China produces so much of the world's stuff and they could just shut it off and say, you know, I mean, look, they are building an infrastructure that will enable them to no longer need or be reliant upon the West. And that's what's very different. I mean, if you look at what made the United States the powerhouse, it was a manufacturing base. We were the manufacturer to the world, now we're not. And that has all moved East. We had more gold than anyone, now we don't. That has all moved to the East. We were the petrol reserve dollar, we still are, but is that moving to the East too? Sure feels that way. And so when you talk about what it was that made the dollar what the dollar is, those things are starting to slide by. And the worst part about all this is, is that 65% of this country is living paycheck to paycheck. 99% of this country has their head buried in the sand and has no idea what's coming. And everyone thinks there's going to be an engineered soft landing. And you can see, I can see that that isn't what the central planners want. They want what Klaus Schwab said, a great reset. How does that happen? You push everyone away from the dollar. OPEC denounces the dollar as the only as the only settlement currency for oil, and bang, overnight, dollars flood home, collapse the dollar, interest rates spike, hyperinflation, and stocks, bonds, and real estate collapse in a matter of hours. So all four pillars of wealth: dollar, stocks, bonds, real estate collapse. And the and the Fed didn't do it because they're getting tough. But no, they didn't get that tough because they don't want to be the one to light that powder keg. With July 4th coming, they don't want the boom. Instead, they'd rather give it to those guys who will be the bad guys, just like Putin's to blame for all our ills right now, which is just stupid. Uh, they'll blame OPEC and the BRICS nations for blowing everything up in this country. And I, I wish I didn't see the world the way that I do. It's a curse right now. But it's also 
something that I won't be a victim if it happens. I'm preparing in every way, not just with gold and silver. If you don't have a whole bunch of food and water, if you don't have the ability to protect your family, if you haven't taken these steps by now, why are you not preparing? They said the, the Titanic couldn't sink or wouldn't sink. It was impossible. So they didn't have the life rafts that they needed in order for everyone to be safe and, and people died. And that's exactly what, the, what I see. You know, the, the U.S. economy is a Titanic. The U.S. dollar is a Titanic. And uh, um, you can see the rats fleeing from the ship already. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think that it, it's getting scarier and scarier and scarier. And a move like this by NATO only only puts uh, an exclamation point on the idiocy right now of what's going on. Absolutely. And like we've said, you have called a lot of this, but you're also a gold bull. It's been steady. But I want to go through some of the anti-gold arguments and see if you have a rebuttal because yeah. a lot of these do float around. So one is that gold is inflationary. And we have this art because the supply comes on at a fixed amount every year, a low inflation rate. Gold supply to fall after 2022 that's what this report says. Gold scrap supply is projected to decline at an average rate of 4.6% through 2027, but offsetting the fall in gold scrap supply is a forecast net rise in gold mine production. So the question for you is, is that a concern? Do people need to feel like it's not as scarce if there is this offsetting online of production from these new mines? If you take all the gold that the United States supposedly owns at Fort Knox, over 8,000 metric tons, it comes to under a half a trillion dollars. Uh, and so, you know, the, the amount of gold that is mined each year versus uh, the amount of money that's out there, it, it's, it's ridiculous. And not only that, you know, the cost of mining has become much more expensive um, with, with higher fuel prices. And so mining production is going down for sure. Um, and, you know, I think the low lying fruit has been picked long ago. I think that it, it's, it's when you look at the amount of money that's out there that has been created that is in financial assets and then realize that there's only been, uh, I don't know how many trillions, maybe five trillion dollars worth of gold. I don't know what the numbers would be, but not much more than that mine since Genesis. You know, I mean, so no, I don't think it. And I think that if, if when the world realizes that, and I think, you know, the fact that it was reclassified tier one is the biggest deal of all. When the world realizes that it's the COMEX manipulation of the price of gold that is creating this illusion that gold is not as valuable as it is, if you look at the acquisition of the central banks, they've been massively buying it for years now, since 2017. And how do they do it without the price rising? Well, the LME, the London Metals Exchange, and the COMEX are fraudulent. And they're able to suppress the price of levered futures contracts, while at the same time, their acquisition betrays the price. Their acquisition is, is telling you that they, you ain't seen nothing yet in the price of gold. Why would they have reclassified a tier one and not special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund? It's the only other tier one asset other than US dollars and treasuries for the last 80 years. So all of a sudden, gold's now tier one, the central banks are accumulating it, and the price doesn't reflect it. But, you know, let's take a look at the price just for a moment, if we may. And you look at every single asset class, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin down 70, 80%. You look at... Uh, uh, the Dow Jones, the S&P, the Russell 2000, the NASDAQ, they're all down 30% or more, 20 to 30%. You look at the FANG stacks, some of them down 60, 70%. You look at everything, it's down, gold's up 2 or 3%. In the environment that's coming, Elliot, he or she who loses least wins, gold is doing its job. You pull away the, the commercial and central bank manipulation and gold is way higher. But the fact that they reclassified it tier one, the fact that the banks keep buying it, the fact that China and Russia keep accumulating it, the handwriting is on the wall. It will be much higher. It will peg itself to, I think, a new world reserve standard. So um, I don't know. No, I don't think it's inflationary. And I don't think you've seen anything yet uh, in terms of the price. Thank you so much for that rebuttal. I love throwing these arguments at you so we can get the other side. Obviously, this is what people hear you know, a lot. So that is super helpful. Where can people go to buy gold if they are interested? So uh, our, I've been saying this for a while. Our new website will be rolled out in August. In the meantime, uh, make sure that they put the early stage investor in the subject line. Send us an email at info at milesfranklin.com. We'll reply with the current price list. We'll reply with any question, answers to any questions that we're 
were made and we welcome anyone out there to give us a call. We'll make sure that you get the most competitive prices in the industry and from a company with the best reputation and maybe one of the only major, if not the only major licensed and bonded precious metals company in America. So I appreciate our affiliation and the ability to be here and talk to your people. It means a lot to me and I take that as do my brokers very seriously when we're talking to the people who call us from your channel. So give us a shot. Fire away some questions. We'll give you the current price list and uh, do what we can to uh, make it a good experience. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Please consult a certified financial planner when making any decisions about investing. And do your own research before making any decisions. Investments are risky and you can lose lots of money in them.